All right, guys, you should open up your notes packet to example six. Looks like this right here. It's a question about a couch, although I will admit that that doesn't look very much like a couch, but that's okay. In physics, everything's pretty much a uh, square or a rectangle or a sphere, so we'll just go with it. May as well be a perfectly rectangular couch. All right, now, in example six, um, there it's, it's a continuation of example five. Okay, so uh, it says we're going to push on it with a force of 250 newtons, which is where we ended the previous question. Uh, and the other thing it says later on in the problem is use the same coefficient of friction that you got from the previous problem. So the coefficient of friction in example five was 0 0.501. All right, so I think we can we can safely call that just 0.5. I think that's what it was. Hang on, I have it calculated over here off the screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 510. All right, so we'll just go with 0.51. That's probably good enough. All right, now um, part A says draw the force diagram. All right, so at this point, pause the video, draw a force diagram, then resume the video. Go on, pause it, wait it. I'll keep waiting while it's paused. Okay, resume. Um, we have normal force, gravity, and I hope you drew friction to the left because if you're pushing sort of rightwards, then that means the friction ought to be leftwards because friction always opposes motion or attempted motion. All right, next thing. We've got to write some equations for the sum of the forces because part B wants to know stuff about like the normal force. Okay, so it says, is the normal force equal to the couch's weight? That's a great question. Back in example five, the force that we were applying was completely horizontal. All right, so if we were still pushing on this couch completely horizontally, we're not lifting it up, we're not pushing down on it, and so that would mean that the weight of the couch would be equal to the normal force acting on the couch. But if you start applying forces in a downwards direction or an upwards direction on an object, its weight and the supporting force applied by the surface don't have to be equal. All right, so let's um, see what happens here if we write an equation for the sum of the vertical forces. We will get, all right, normal force up, gravity down, all right, and then we have this applied force here, also kind of down-ish, so it'll be minus something. All right, but it's not just going to be N minus Mg minus F. That would be incorrect because this is applied at an angle. It's not 250 newtons straight down on the couch. It's 250 newtons at an angle, so that means a trig function is involved. So pause the video again, figure out the trig function. All right, now that you have pondered the trig function, you have hopefully come up with, well, since the force is applied like this, and the angle is given like, like that, that means that the vertical component must be proportional to the sine function, because that's the opposite side. Also, for that matter, there's going to be a horizontal component, and that's going to be proportional to the cosine function. So our y equation should more correctly say that right there. All right, so again, in case you're still hazy on that, since the force that's being applied is applied at a slightly downwards angle, we need to include only the downward, the vertical component, of that force. We can't just say F, it's got to be F sine theta. All right, so based on what I'm seeing here, looks like the normal force is Mg plus F sine theta. So that's definitely larger than just the weight of the couch. All right, um, part C wants us to actually determine the normal force. All right, so fine. It's a 50 kilogram couch times 9.8, and then a 
250 newton force times sine of 37. Uh, sine of 37 is about 3 fifths. So that's going to be plus another 150 newtons. All right, so overall, the normal force acting on the couch is going to be 640 newtons, assuming that I can add. All right, now if I added that wrong, of course, you should stop and calculate and make sure it's right. And any time that I would reuse this value, you need to uh, change that around, okay? Use the, the correct value, whatever it's supposed to be. All right, part D. Write an equation for the sum of the forces in the x direction. All right, determine whether or not the couch will move. Okay, so x direction. For the x direction, we have friction, and we have the horizontal component of the uh, applied force. All right, so again, pause the video and think for a moment. What trig function should I use to get the horizontal component of that force? Ah, it's cosine. So F cosine theta minus friction equals, well actually we don't know, we're, that's what we're trying to figure out is, is, is it even going to move, right? That is the question. So if it moves, it would move because this force is larger than the friction force. So we don't really necessarily have enough information to go off of there, right? I'm going to put a question mark. All right, so let's just go ahead and calculate. F cosine theta would be 250 times cosine 37, so that would be about 200. And then for the friction force, all right, friction is fun. Uh, the coefficient of friction was 0.51. And the normal force that we calculated up here was 640. All right, so 0.51 times 640 should be, let's see, 320 plus 6.4, so 326.4 newtons. Uh-oh, what does that mean? It means it won't move. The couch doesn't budge. So, whereas 250 newtons was enough to move the couch in example 5, because we were pushing like this, if you're pushing down on it and digging it into the ground as you push, that will increase the normal force, which therefore also increases the friction force. And therefore, it won't move. Also, if the force is applied at an angle, then the horizontal component of it is less than the whole force. So we've got a smaller horizontal force versus a larger friction force. We haven't applied enough force to make this thing move. All right, so that's our resolution to part D is uh, no, it's not enough to make the couch move. Okay, now part E. In E, we are going to uh, apply the force at 37 degrees above the horizontal instead. All right, so that's going to look like this. We're like pulling in a slightly upwards direction on the couch. All right, now, uh, a lot of the time people will do this wrong, meaning here's what they will do. They will look at everything they did in part, uh, parts, you know, A through D, and they'll just, like, reuse a bunch of numbers and then be confused because, like, I, I ask for, you know, like, what, what's the acceleration of the couch? And they're still getting, like, well, it should be zero because it's not going to budge. Like, I just, I just reused all the same numbers, and uh, I don't understand. Nothing changed, Mr. Erico. It, it still won't move. Or maybe even worse, 
they will get this and they'll get negative 126.4 newtons and then conclude from that that the, that equals ma and that would not be correct either if the friction force is larger than all the other horizontal forces you're applying it won't move it can't move you have to overcome the force of friction so if you're getting that friction is the largest force that means it doesn't move all right now the trick here is this the friction force will no longer be 326.4 newtons it's going to be smaller why would that why would the friction force be smaller mr erico you said friction's fun uh so i don't see anything and the mu is still 0.51 shouldn't change a thing ah uh, but see the thing is the normal force depends on how hard you're pushing what angle you're pushing at but also whether or not you're pushing down or pulling up. So if I go all the way back up to the beginning, I'll just declare this to be part E all over again, right? All right, one very essential thing changes in my work here. So pause the video and think, what sign would change in my work that I did in part A? Ah. Yes, the sign that would change, very good, is that one right there. The normal force is up. This applied force is up-ish, right, up and to the right. So therefore, it should have the same sign in the y equation as the normal force. So that means now when I solve for the normal force, this will be a minus. So that means that the normal force is now, instead of being 640 newtons, it's only 340 newtons. All right, ponder this equation now. Nothing changes, except they're asking a different question. It's, what would the acceleration of the couch be? All right, so if they ask for the acceleration, that implies that you set the thing equal to, not zero, but ma. All right, and now the numbers that I plug in are going to be largely the same, except the friction force now uses the new normal force of only 340 newtons. Okay, so crucial to your understanding of this question is the idea that the normal force depends on how hard you push on the couch and what angle you push at, whether you're pushing down on it versus pulling up on it, okay? All right, so now that the normal force is different, uh, we're only going to have 173.4 newtons of friction uh, opposing you versus 200 newtons going forwards. So our 50 kilogram couch will now experience an acceleration of 0. Point, what is it, 8, not that, 0. 0.3, meters per second squared. All right, so we can move the couch. All right, now, your homework questions are largely, well, homework question really, it's just one problem more or less. It's gonna largely imitate exactly this right here, okay? That does not mean memorize how to do the problem. It does mean you can imitate the process. Okay, so, from start to finish, the process involved drawing a good force diagram, writing a sum of forces for the y direction and for the x direction, and making sure to include components of the applied force in each of those equations, since the force was applied at an angle and therefore has to appear as both an x thing and a y thing. Okay, all right, and then friction is fun, Plug in your normal force from above and go from there. All right, I hope that helps. Um, so good luck on the homework, guys.